Good morning, it's Kathy from Crowder's Mountain, North Carolina. It's a beautiful morning over here on the mountain. And it got me to thinking about a barn quilt that I had made that had a cross in the middle of it for a focal point. And I just loved making that barn quilt. And I thought, well, I've never uploaded it to YouTube, so let me look at it and see where it's at. Well, I looked, and it, the film was like three hours long in all, and so I knew you guys don't want to sit here for three hours watching that. So I cut out pieces. I fast-forward some of it. Um, I'm going to let the music play through some of it. and But I want to give you enough information that if you want to make one, you'll have all the necessary information to make you one and your instructions put it that way and Willa pulled out that little puppy pee pad and she is trying to get you to understand that's what I've got under there to catch any drippings that come off and uh, she'll wander off in just a minute and we'll be okay <laughs> but I want to show you the pattern that I've got now I found this somewhere I'm not sure where I saw the the picture but I took the picture and I just took a piece of graph paper and blocked it off so each one of my blocks is six inches wide and that means I have to have six blocks diagonally and six blocks horizontally on my quilt square before I start drawing my pattern but let me tell you about the paint I've got first. I go to Home Depot and get my paint, and they mix them up in them little samples. Now, they've got the outdoor paint. That's what you have to have for this barn quilt. And I went ahead and put another coat of kills or a coat of kills on it just, just so I knew it was primed good. I wanted my paints to show up in, um, in the best color possible so I wanted to give it a really good foundation um, I use frog tape because that works better for me than any other in the, than any other tape that I've got and then I found this little pencil and they probably got them at anywhere but I found it on Amazon and it's just the neatest little pencil it doesn't get sharp uh, it doesn't get dull the lead is flat, so it lays right up against your yardstick or ruler, whatever you're using to mark your lines. And it, it just, it's just really, it's really helpful not to be worried about that when you're trying to mark. So now I'm going through here. Like I said, I need six blocks across and down. So I'm marking my my with my yardstick I'm marking and placing a little line, dot every six inches across the top across the sides all the way around okay I'm gonna let the music play for a little bit and I'll come back when I get the blocks all on there but I wanted you to see what I'm doing
Okay, slowed it back down now. You see, we have our blocks drawn, and we've got six blocks across, six blocks down. Now all we have to do is take each block on our pattern and draw that same pattern down into our quilt. So the second block up from the bottom left needs to go diagonal from left to right from and from bottom to top. That's the same exact way our pattern is in that block. So I'll let you watch that for a little bit and then that's all you have to do. Just go around. Go all the way around your pattern, drawing those blocks. Now, some places, if you see that you've got a long line that goes across multiple blocks, but in the same direction, you can take that yardstick and draw it all the way across, just like I'm doing there. And what I'm doing here is actually going to create that diamond shape that the cross is going to be in the middle of. So you'll see how I'm working it all the way around. Okay, now I did speed this up, but this was one of the most critical pieces in putting this particular barn quilt together was to draw the cross. Because you'll see in the pattern that the cross has two colors in it and there's a triangle at each end of the cross, all four ends. And then it's split in the middle. So that's going to be our two colors. And I had to do some calculating on this, but it really wasn't that hard once I thought it through. And so you'll just have to figure out how big your quilt is and how to place that cross right in the center of that diamond shape. And for me, the diamond shape was 6 inches. No, it was 12 inches across at the bottom. So I had to figure out if I needed to put it in the center of those two blocks. I had to figure out how wide the cross was, which turned out to be 2 inches. So I just subtracted the 2 from 6. I got 4 and I knew I had to have two inches on each side of the cross. So that's how I finally made the marks and started drawing out the cross. Once I got that done, the rest of it was not that hard. <laughs> so I've got this on fast forward because I am kind of slow while I'm drawing. fun part comes up when we start to paint. I'll let you listen to some music till I get through.
Okay, now I've got the cross on there, and then we get to start the fun part. Now, like I said earlier, I'm using frog tape. That really worked better for me than anything else that I had. I've tried a, a lot of different brands, but the frog tape for me worked better. And I'm all about not having that paint bleed through. You can fix it. It's not not the end of the world <laughs> if the paint does bleed through and no big deal you can just fix it but it's so much easier if it don't happen to start with especially when you've got so many lines to cover and paint now I do erase my pencil marks as I go I'll, I'll put the painters tape on there and then I'll start erasing the lines and that a little eraser really actually helps uh, press down the painter's tape because you really want to press down hard all the way to get less bleed through as possible. Okay, I've got the first section of the cross taped up. And again, I'm going to I'm going to erase out as much many lines as I can after I've gone over it and pressed down really hard. And when I'm satisfied with all that, then we're going to start the painting. Now, I'm using two shades of yellow for the cross. One is called Upbeat Yellow. That's the light color. And then the darkest color, I think it's called Sunflower Yellow, uh, Sunshine Yellow. I can't re really remember what the color was exactly, but uh, I, you could see that chart laying over to the left of the screen. That's how I picked it out. I just used that chart. When I was at Home Depot, I found the colors that I wanted on that chart, took it up there, and had them mix it for me. So using those color coordination charts helps me out a lot. And I use that little paintbrush that's just really an old cheap paintbrush to just get all of that eraser uh trash I guess that's what you call it erased or garbage I, you don't want that in your paint and if you don't get that off of that board when you start painting you can see it in your paint you can get it out with tweezers but I have missed some and once the paint dries is you just have to leave it in there or you'll mess up something I'm actually going around the edges with that eraser too, and it, it helps press it down, like I said. But, uh, I want to try to get as much markings off of it as I can. So I'm going to paint this, give it three coats, and before I fast forward it, I want to show you what I do between each coat so that I don't have to paint it on there, walk away for a while and come back and hope it's dry. I've got a little embossing tool. It's like a heat gun, but it only gets about 300 degrees. And so it, it doesn't it doesn't bake your paint. It, it doesn't get it too hot. Like a hair dryer, you may use a hair dryer if you don't get too close to it. That might work. Uh, I'm sure people probably use that, but for me, this little heat gun works better. Uh, and I, I think if you had one of these tools, uh, I think you'd enjoy it because this is small work anyway. So it, you could you can watch that paint go from a glossy look you can even see it on the film here 
it was glossy and now it's looking like it's getting matte color. So you can see it drying. So you know when it's dry and you can put your next coat on it. I kind of give it a minute just to cool down. But don't get it too close to the paint or it will, pop, it will start bubbling. Okay. So I've got the three coats on it now. And we're going to start taking the paint off. See how fast I did that? I'm teasing. I cut part of it out. <laughs> this is fun. It's so much fun. You finally get to this part. And start seeing things take shape. Okay. I'm going to cut out parts of it. And then. I'll be right back when I get all of the rest of the cross finished. So here you go. We've got we've got our first color down, the light yellow. And we're going to start preparing it and put the darker color yellow on it. One little tip I wanted to tell you before I start painting that other is when I get through with my little paintbrush I put it in these little baggies and that way the brush stays moist and damp and doesn't dry out on me because there's always places that you're going to have to go back when you finish and touch up so putting them in there just keeps them handy and you don't have to worry about them drying out on you. And if I get tired, I want to start work, stop working for the day, but I'm not finished, I just pop them in the refrigerator in those baggies and bring them back out the next morning. So I'm going to tape up the rest of the cross and let you see that part of it. Um, I'll be back when we start taking the first tape off. contrast between those two colors. Is that not pretty? Now you can see the crosses starting to take shape. I just love it. I hope y'all having fun watching this. I am. <laughs> and I've watched it 47 times. <laughs> Makes me want to go down there and paint another one. May do that tomorrow. So I'm going to paint, uh, I mean, tape up the rest of it, and I'll be back when I get that through. Okay, here comes the big reveal. This is the most exciting part of the whole quilt, finishing that cross. And taking that last bit of tape off of it. Look how beautiful she is. Isn't that pretty? Now I've, I've got the courage to just keep going. Now I've got a pretty cross to look at while I'm working too, right? 
Okay, I taped up the diamond part and I taped up the cross because now we're going to paint the middle. And again, I put three coats on every section. So I'm going to paint the diamond, the background of the diamond now, in that white paint, drying each coat. Alright, that was the third coat. And it's dry, and we're going to start taking the tape off. You can really see the difference in the white paint and the primer white. Now watch this. I take this tape off this cross. Just makes those colors just pop. Got a little bleed through. No hysterical catastrophe. No imminent disaster. We can fix it. Remember, I got the my paintbrushes in those baggies right up there. No problem. Look how pretty that looks. Okay, I've taped up our dark gray, and I've got all that painted, and next I'm painting the white around the outside of the gray, and I just keep twisting the barn quilt around till I get to each part of it. My table's so long I couldn't get, I couldn't reach across the sides. So you see what I'm doing, I'm just going all the way around it again now with the white, three colors, drying each one with that embossing tool. And now that I've got the next the next section of film will be the white though the blue. It's gonna be the dark blue. I've got all the white done and now I'm gonna go all the way around it with the dark blue. And then the lighter blue will be in each block, and each cor each corner is is a block, and that will be the light blue. I'm getting ready to paint that darker blue color on there now. So we're coming into the home stretch. As soon as I get those colors on, we'll be finished. Look at us, we're done. I just love her. I hope you love her too. She's got to find a nice home. Now, before she's hung up anywhere, I have to tell you, this Rain Guard water sealer, I done the research and this is the best that I found. It's for new and aged painted surfaces. I listened to somebody at a big box store tell me what to do. 
as far as sealing that very first barn quilt that I did that took me three days. And I ruined it. It turned yellow. And I've even poured Clorox on it trying to straighten it out. And it, it's just ruined. So I learned a lesson. I'll keep the barn quilt handy where I can look up and see it. That it was my first one. I did it. But I ruined it by not doing my homework. My fault. Nobody else's. But I just want to tell you guys about this rain guard paint sealer because it is fabulous. Look at these other barn quilts that I've done. And I've sealed it with that rain guard and they look just as pretty. See the cross up there? I've already got it sealed. And I did a little one for Man Candy. He wanted one to go on his building. So I did one for him. So I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoy watching my YouTube channel. And if you hadn't already subscribed, I hope you will. And I'll probably do an acrylic pour next time. See you later.